Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we will be building an SSRT, per usual, but not just any SSRT, not your normal SSRT. Not even close. No, today we will be building an SSRT that can transform into a space station. So yes, I do read your comments, all of them, and some of you have some good ideas. One of your comments was to turn an SSRT or a space plane into a space station. Now at first, a lot of ideas went through my head. Like does the space station have a ring? Gravity ring? How about a big giant antenna or dish? Definitely gonna need solar panels, radiators, docking ports, the whole kit and caboodle. My first idea was to actually build the space station and then try to turn it into an SSRT or a space plane. But that wasn't really gonna work out aerodynamically. So I went ahead and attempted to make the space plane first and then try to take the space plane and turn it into a space station. As we all know, Kerbal Space Program is, well, still in a very glitchy state when it comes to certain things. One of those things being the robotic parts. I have run into a lot of problems with those. Especially when you use two times symmetry, they can get a little funky. It's weird. Sometimes it works. Other times, not so much. As for a space plane that folds into a a space station we're gonna need a lot of these robotic parts and the problem with well the physics of KSP is that it doesn't really read things on an aerodynamic level of physics it more or less kind of cheats you'll notice that when you build things you'll have a green connection node on each of these parts these nodes are not just there to look pretty the size of the node de depicts the strength of the connection but also the amount of drag that the connection can can produce. So when building anything aerodynamic in this game, you want to make sure that you cover all of the green connection no nodes. And not just cover them with any part, but cover them with connection nodes that have that are of similar size. So if you have a part that has no more connection nodes to connect to, and all of them are connected to each other through similar sized parts or similar sized connection nodes, then the game reads that whole part as aerodynamically sound. Leave one of those freaking little nodes open and suddenly you've got drag or really bad drag you're gonna get drag anyway but not as bad as leaving one of those suckers open and no placing a rocket at the end is not gonna help with that unfortunately some do though some some do some have some rockets actually are kind of aerodynamically sound ish but anyway these green connection nodes for a craft like this are everywhere why because this craft has to mold and form into a space station which means that I have to have parts that are not connected via those connections nodes but rather connected through robotic hinges now I could use a mod called what was it ferrum aerospace something like that been a while since I've played with that it actually does proper aerodynamic calculations which would allow me to do what I need to do and not have so much drag but in my Kerbal Space Program playthrough I try to keep it as stock as possible no new parts no new aerodynamics everything's stock the only difference is that I use something called restock that changes the skin of the parts makes them look prettier as well as a couple of other beauty mods to make things look prettier cleaner nicer I also have the DLCs which to me those are stock they're downloadable content but they're made by the same devs and company that made the vanilla game so to me those are considered stock it's stock that you have to buy <laughs> but it's still stock nevertheless it's not a third-party mod so vanilla game and DLCs are stock that's all I that's all I ever use no plain plus Rover plus this plus that plus plus plus, plus. plus. just stock albeit pretty stock where was it going with this yeah so no modded parts but anyway that being said that means that this thing this craft in particular is one of the most draggiest aerodynamically not all that great crafts that I've made in a long time it's about as aerodynamic as a freaking brick on approach <laughs> If it was an air-breathing SSTO, then that would be some serious problems. Really bad problems. However, luckily, I did not go for the air-breathing SSTO approach. Instead, I went to the tried and trusted SSRT, which drag-wise, it doesn't really need to worry too much about it. Why, do you ask? Well, it's simple. SSRTs cut through the atmosphere very quickly. They're not in there long enough to really worry about drag. Although in my book, still worry about drag and do your best to minimize it while 
while building an SSRT space plane, but it's really not all that important. You're gonna cut through the thick atmosphere pretty hard pretty fast, and then most of your acceleration burn is gonna happen in thin to no atmosphere whatsoever. It's one of the many reasons why I just love SSRTs, plus they just look so freaking cool. Aveos, they suck up so much fuel. I know, isn't it awesome? Well, you can imagine that that uh oh, 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 oh. a lot of testing was involved and a lot of failures at first i was just gonna have the wings be one part then i thought well wouldn't it be cool if the wings could fold back so that it you know it didn't show the wings so it wasn't obvious that it was an ssto and that lasts for a little bit then i was like you know what well, wouldn't it be cool if the wings could like completely fold in like an accordion that'd be awesome and it was in paper on paper with the paper lots, lots of paper, paper going on however in reality when you have a bunch of robotic parts connected to each other, things tend to get a little wobbly. <gasps> Shit! So I had to find a good balance between auto struts, regular struts, and the placement of these robotic parts for maximum effectiveness. Some of these robotic parts don't really have that much of a tolerance for high temperature either. So I had to put them in places where they wouldn't be in direct contact with the re-entry heat. Fun! Eventually I was able to figure out a system where I could auto strut certain parts to keep it stable and not have to worry about auto, str auto strutting all the parts. Because the thing about auto strut is that if you try to auto strut a part that's connected to a robotic part and then try to move that robotic part it won't allow the robotic part to move because it's auto strutted to another part that's beyond the robotic part and so it, you know it's not going to move because it's tied down somewhere else you know if, if you're if you're wondering how to get the auto strut option because i get a, I, I get this a lot in comments go to your settings inside settings you'll see something called advanced tweakables make sure to click it click click anyway, anyway back to what we're doing now being that this is a SSRT, that means that most of the dead weight from the engines is going to be in the back. So once the fuel drains out, the center of mass is going to shift all the way to the back. So in order to compensate for that, I had to put custom made canards in the front of the craft. And the reason why I made custom is because the canards that are available in the game are sadly not strong enough. I tried. I know, they're not. So with the custom ones, all I needed was a little movement because wings are actually pretty strong in this game. So all I needed was the front wings on the nose to tilt up a little bit in order to bring the center of lift to where I wanted it. Funny enough is that the actual design of the craft allowed for the center of mass and the center of lift to be perfect at the end of the flight path or the end of the flight when all the fuel was drained. However, when the fuel was, when the craft was fully fueled, that's when I needed to change the center of lift closer to the front. Still made the craft drag it as hell but it worked ish now this craft is that is in no means completed it is ex still ex ex still what still extremely experimental just landing it took immense patience in order to get it just right obviously obvious obviously because of the fact that the center of mass was so far back that the nose would pitch up during landing in order to solve this problem i'd probably just need to put extra landing gears in the back that would deploy during landing but i didn't have a whole lot of time so i needed to wrap it up it was a fun build though it took a long time but i think it turned out pretty sweet so cue that beautiful montage footage
Yeah, that was like the tenth landing attempt. I was just, I wasn't even I wasn't gonna mess with it no more. I was done. Bavaya's put fuel in front of that. Would you come on? Of course, I thought of that already. No, the only way you're gonna make this thing from going nose up is you're gonna have to put a, another set of landing gears further back. But anyway, today's shout out goes to T U X. You, Ukes, Tukes, Teokes, Teo, Teo. Oh boy. Looks like he's pretty new to uh, Kerbal Space Program videos. He makes a lot of interesting things. Definitely recommend that you go check him out and give him some love. Well, there she is in all her glory. Still haven't picked out a name for her yet. Space Station SSTO, pretty much designation. Yep. But anyway, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. It'll help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider, consider kiss, kiss sitter. Who the hell's sitter? Consider subscribing. I upload often, mostly Kerbal Space Program. One of these days, I might try something else out. We'll see. I also have a membership program if you're interested. If you join up, you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff. Pretty cool. Check it out. But anyway, this has been a Kerbal Space Program video, SSTO. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all. Take care care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye.